stop, won't stop, can't stop, won't stop, can't stop, won't stop, can't stop, won't stop. Three, two, one. What is up, everybody? You are listening. You are watching to the Constant Elevation Podcast. I am your host, Gabe Rock. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good to say those words. Uh, welcome back to Season 7 of the Constant Elevation Podcast. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. D- definitely a good break uh, that was needed. But uh, as usual, the way I, I kind of do my seasons is uh, I know the energy is kind of waning and I need to get a break. But now the, when the time is to come, the, the return time is back, it is now that time. Uh, very, very excited to be back here. Lots stuff to catch up on uh, probably the um the if, well actually if you're new to the show first off head to a uh, uh, constant elevation.co you can and wherever you've listened to your podcast you can find all of my content we got youtube channels we got the podcast and spotify and uh, google and i and uh, uh itunes everywhere you listen to podcasts so thank you for subscribing you're a first time listener and if you're og uh thank you for returning uh definitely uh have a previous i had this weird story uh, i was tdy last week yeah last week and i was just kind of speaking about something and then someone goes comes up next to me and he's like are you are you colonel villa i was like yeah because he just he didn't see for the front he goes oh cool i thought that was you i hear your voice all the time in my head i was like what and he goes yeah i'm looking forward to the he was like yeah well, uh, i listened to your show is it coming back soon i was like oh yeah 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 actually it's coming back next week it was just kind of weird when someone recognizes me by my voice that's just really odd and whenever someone says they they know me i always i don't know what angle they're going to come is that from the air force is that from crossfit is that did it do something stupid probably that um that's actually the the very biggest news i want to share is something stupid but yeah, uh, anyways, uh, constantelevation.co is the uh, mothership. So if you go back to that website, you can catch up on all my previous content. And then now, welcome back for season seven. So stupid things going on. Uh, probably the biggest stupid thing that went on is uh, I was injured. And so there I was. Uh, I ran into this building. It was on fire. And there was a tiger there. Somehow, I don't know why this tiger was in the building, but the building was on fire. And I had to go save, like, uh, it was like a box of raccoons. And so I had to run in there and grab it. And then on the, I'm kidding. No, none of that actually happened. It'd be really cool if that story was actually true. Um, but it was just a stupid sports related injury at Unit PT Volleyball, where no one is being competitive other than yours truly. So, like, um, there I was. Um, uh, about to be defensive player of the year. So we're playing just regular volleyball. And then the 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 net that's in the gym is a little bit lower um, than a regular, like uh, if it was at a could the, what a regulation height for volleyball, I'm, a net, I'm fairly confident I would not, I don't have those kind of hops at all. But because the net was lower, I was like, ooh, I'm about to, I'm going to be defensive player of the year. So I'm playing really aggressive by the net. Oh, even actually thinking about the, and retelling the story, I'm getting shadow pains. So I go up. And then as I come down, I actually roll my ankle on someone else's foot. And so that person is, I don't even know who it was, to be honest. Uh, that person is okay, but I rolled my ankle and like, it was bad. So I, I'm laying on the floor. Everybody just kind of huddled around me. My boss is like, hey, let's all, let's more people huddle around Gabe and see if he's, he's okay. I was like, they're like, what do you need me to do? I was like, I need all of you to get the fuck away from me and I'm fine. And so I figured it was just like a really, really bad uh, sprained ankle. Hobble to my car, make it home. And then uh, fast forward, I go to the ER the next day because it got really, really worse and um, found out I had some avulsion fractures in, in my foot. Regardless of me saying that. Uh, I do not require a cast, nor do I require surgery. So those are the big things going on. So I've had this stupid, this stupid walking boot thing um, for the longest time. And so it's been working and it's good, but like it's definitely a piece of um, an injury that didn't have to happen because I'm me and I'm stupid. I ended up injuring myself. So I had to fill out the safety report and I even put on the way to a win because our team did win. I did. When I go back to work, I'm like, did we win? Yes, we did. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome for my service. So the idea of um, just being stupid, eh, it's stupid, and but it hasn't stopped me. Can't, definitely can't stop, won't stop. There's not more on that in a second. Um, so I still been coaching at CrossFit Hampton Roads. I still been trying to work out. Uh, I'm, tr- I was, I really thought it was going to be like upper body season. I was going to get really strong. Now I'm still weak. I'm, I'll, I still suck at push ups. I still suck at pull ups, but I've been still working out. Um, just cause I have an injury doesn't mean, um, it's an excuse. And so I've been coaching. I, I find out that I have a lot more, um, <laughs> a lot more people concerned when I start, started taking off my boot and they're like, Oh, the doc cleared you. I was like, First off, I'm a grown ass man. I do what I want to do. And then they're like, well, what did Gina say? I'd be like, mm, she doesn't know yet. 
And so <laughs> I had to just be smart. And I, I am being very, very smart. I'm trying not to push it, but I understand that like the rehab, I've been doing rehab exercises since like day one. I, I was looking them all up, just trying to preserve some whatever fitness levels that I have. So uh, it's a long recovery road for me. I'm not a spring chicken, so it will be a long road for me, but that's okay. It's just an idea of just getting creative. Like for instance, I can do what we're going to do uh, Murph in a couple weeks. Instead of doing the running, I'm just going to row a mile. And I could put my foot up on it like a, a, roll, a skateboard next to me, and I'm good. It, it's, it takes a little bit longer because I'm obviously rowing with one leg. But, like, I can still do, work, do the workout, and so I'm not worried about that. And then and I could do the push-ups, pull-ups, and, and squats. I could actually do decent air squats. It looks kind of wonky, but I can get hip crease below knees and come to full extension at the top. And so I, 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 I just being smart about it, and that's the key thing. I'm not that smart, so me trying to remain smart is going to be key to my road to recovery. Anyways, so that's kind of like the the um, the biggest news that happened uh, in between um, season six and season seven. I actually have to step I have to walk away from the camera because I should have actually brought this closer. But as you know, when I record these episodes, it's one take, Jake. If I, if my kid, so Jean is out of town because she's actually moving our daughter into she moving out of NAU um, dorms and moving into apartment in Phoenix. She's going to go to NAU just from Phoenix uh, remote learning, and so that idea. So the wifey is out of town. Um, and then Benjamin is my, my son, Benjamin, he's a sophomore, just started working at a county grill in Hampton. And so if you go see him and you see some weird looking Asian dude, that's my son, 16 year old. And so, uh, give him a shout out though. But, um, so if I, if he walks in and, or our dog Sally walks into the shot, it is what it is and everybody's going to be cool with it. So, but I do have a really cool surprise for that. I was really excited for the launch of season seven. So give me a couple seconds. Yeah, I know. Super professional, right? Get your shit together, but whatever. So check this out. I am proud to announce that uh, we're going to be selling on ConstantElevation.co. If you go to ConstantElevation.co slash shop, you can purchase yourself one of these. This is my Can't Stop, Won't Stop morale patch, custom made by Reaper Patches, but being sold by yours truly. And so if you're, uh, if you're a fan of the show or you just kind of want to have a uh, – I'm, I'm slowly but surely seeing that uh, um, the – the patch game is a real deal out there. So, but yeah, can't stop, won't stop for reals. That's a whole, you know, that's part of our intro song this week, this season. And just making sure that uh, um, if you're about some of that life, you want to be, you want to rep the team. There you go. So again, head to constantelevation.co slash shop and you can purchase your own limited edition. And I do all the shipping and stuff. Like I have my entire setup over there. I only have, not kidding, like maybe like 90. I think that's probably the number that I uh, that I have left because I've been giving them to some of the homies um, that when I was TDY. But yeah, if you want to get your limited edition Can't Stop, Won't Stop uh, morale patch, head to constantelevation.co slash shop to pick up one for you and a homie. So uh, now back to the regular show. A couple things, the reason why, why when I get excited, uh, there's, a, there's three things, if you know, you know, three things I wanted to talk about as far as what I'm looking forward to. I'm kind of talking about within the next season seven, but also just sharing my journey as far as what, um, how I can approach leadership and getting everyone to rise to their, their, to their potential. So three things I'm thinking about. One of them is just a transformational time for the comm squadron field. And so I, there, there's a ton of, and being in the position that, I hear, that I'm at here at Lead Command, at Air Combat Command, definitely a lot of perspective of where our community and where we're trying to go. Arguably, the Air Force is kind of reorganizing itself, and I think there's going to be heading into the summertime, potentially some significant and or early fall, some significant decisions going to be made. But it's just kind of like how we are, you know, presenting our, our forces to the joint community and how do we integrate and stay interoperable with our um, joint coalition partners. So as the Air Force, we're trying to figure that out. But then within the Air Force, our community, we're going to have to make some and I'm excited for just some of the key decisions that that need to be made in order to uh, stay prepared for the high end fight. So just being exposed at this level to those conversations and actually not being just exposed, like being part and actually being active in those conversations I think is really really exciting um, I think uh, we've we've it's it's no uh, surprise I um, I believe we've been in an identity crisis for a while in the in the comm field and so I'm actually in a position where I can affect change and so that's going to be really cool um, General Brown already gave us the edict you know accelerate change or lose all right cool whether people knew it or not I'm in a certain position I'm going to try and use my powers for good and making sure I'm collectingly I'm not going off in my own doing like Leroy Jenkins stuff but it's like finding the best of breed ideas bringing them to the table making some decisions because that's kind of, that's what we need to do in addition kind of going hand in hand to my number two item is just understanding our function as lead command for cyber so what that means is we get to what we say hits differently 
right? And so from the other magic comps, that's not a that's not a knock to anybody else. It's a just the responsibility of how it's been assigned to ACC. We are lead command for cyber, so we need to start acting like lead command for cyber. Um, uh, Establishing the conditions and the framework for conversations is very, very important. And I think we're slowly building those out in the right kind of conversations. But understanding at some point in time, that's the beauty of having a military organization. You're always going to have one person that gets to make, not one, yeah, one person that's going to be designated to make a decision. And I'll be doing that on behalf of the ASICs or uh, as my role as ASICSO division chief, I get to make those choices. And so surrounding myself with the right teammates, uh, which are way smarter than me, is really, really uh, um, uh, nice. But also understanding my responsibility is establishing that framework to make sure we have um, inclusive conversations but move out we don't have time to just mess around and just admiring problems and some of the problems that we have going on now number three is actually the convergence of enterprise IT services as well as war fighting comms and so that's actually both the two sides of our division in a6o uh, cyber transformation division so trying to figure out ways that um, while Everybody understands if it has trons and beeps and bops and green lights and ones and zeros. They're like, oh, yeah, so those comm guys, you clearly have everything kind of integrated and converging together smartly, right? No, we don't. I do believe that uh, um, it's not without doing good American work. Trust me, everybody is pointing in the right direction. However, we are actually um, uh, creating potentially stovepipe solutions and not realizing it because they're they're you're just not actively thinking that like hold on there's some other people in the room that i need to talk to and make sure that my solution is either deliberately unique where it heads go where it, where it is heading or it needs to be converged with other solutions just for a a, a smart um a desired end state and so those pieces uh, again it's um, going to be very very hard work and a lot of it is um the six actually getting out of our comfort zones and going talking to the three and five, and we need to get our shit together to make sure we can actually talk to them smartly and make them, I think everybody understands the importance of what we're doing, but just making sure that we, our expertise is being leveraged correctly and um, expanding, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a board member for several decision bodies and make, sometimes we realize that, hey, we need to look at the the makeup of this decision body because we're missing some key personnel. And so just making sure that, that that inclusive kind of framework that I talked about earlier, that's a way that we can actually make some really good positive change because now it's a team solution versus just one community solution. So I'm really excited about that. And then there's a, the one underlying thing. This is probably going to be more uh, across the entire season seven. Um, again, thank you. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for either tuning in or returning back for season seven. Um, if you know that uh, if you, if you're listened to my show previously, you know that this platform ends up being kind of cathartic for me where I, I share my struggles, I share some of my insights, things that I'm thinking about, and it's a way for just me to document my ideas. Um, they're not obviously con uh, um, official statements of the Air Force or the DOD or anything like that. I have all of those like caveats that this is just me talking. But the idea of just being a, a leader and uh, – one of the things that I talked about earlier when I, so I just pinned on Colonel uh, last uh, September. And so I'm, re, I'm getting, approaching like my one year mark. My previous mentors had told me that that first year is going to be really, really um, eye opening and getting comfortable with how it is to be a Colonel. I was like, what are you talking about? No, I, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I know what that means. No, I do not. I did not know what that means, but I'm slowly but surely understanding the importance and responsibility of not importance is a strong word. The responsibility, just because I have a, a certain kind of rank and taking and using my powers for good, because like I said before, there is there is a certain kind of piece where um, being prof uh, this is not even talking about being professional in the Air Force. I mean, obviously, like I understand customs and courtesies. I could see Sir Man with the best of them, but I'm talking about like when people uh, um, uh, uh, are if they are very, very rank conscious, then I, I kind of have to conduct myself accordingly. But the idea is I just want to be able to contribute just whatever my assigned role is. That's that's the biggest thing for me. But also it's just the confidence is building for me. I think understanding that I, I, I'm good enough to serve in this position. I know and I can establish the conditions for success. And when I say something, it actually will get done. And so that's that part is what I was struggling with. I wasn't sure. I was trying to be a little bit more cautious and trying to figure out ways and maybe sometimes even just kind of tuning everything out and doing stuff on my own and not opening up and, and bringing up my teammates to get some cr uh, creative solutions. But now I'm getting better about that. And so um, uh, I'll say maybe the, I even apologized to my boss the, this past week. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure my first year here sucked. I, don't, I, I could have done much better, but now I'm, I feel like I'm hitting a stride and hitting a stride with my teammates. That's actually much a much more confident thing. I just didn't know who were the key personnel that are really part of like my core team, my core um uh, teammates in order to make progress for our 
collectively assigned responsibilities, and I'm getting closer to that. So I'm really, really excited about that. But I'll, I'll be sharing my struggles and insights and just things that um, I pers- I, I uh, deal with on a leadership level, and hopefully uh, the members of Content Elevation, you guys can learn from it. At least if you hear all these mistake stories, well, then don't do the shit that I do. How about that? Like there's there's definitely some, some uh, trade space in there where maybe my approach isn't the best. And as long as you learn from something that I'm talking about, that's all that matters. I'm not going to profess that like, oh, I have all of the solutions to be the top leader in the Air Force. No. Nobody does. Nobody collectively has all of that information in, in their brain. I think the smart leaders understand their uh, strengths and weaknesses and surround themselves uh, with people to either um, cover down on those weaknesses and or you just work on your weaknesses. Very similar to like CrossFit, right? I still suck at wall balls. So I have to get I can, I can do wall balls now. I have to do wall balls to like a um, like a box squat because I still have kind of kind of sketchy um, uh, depth uh, squat depth. But um, you're only get better your weaknesses. You work on them. So you got to work on them, right? And so depending on the time frame, maybe some of those things, this weakness is not even your role and responsibility. It's somebody else's. Well, then don't do somebody else's job. Hold them accountable, do their job, work together, and let's get this thing done. So those are the kind of things that I'm looking forward to sharing. Uh, I got a couple more episode uh, templates already in the queue. But uh, yeah, excited for the return of season seven of Constant Elevation. So again, uh, you can find uh, whenever you wherever you listen to podcasts, you can subscribe to, the, uh, to our show, to my show. And then on YouTube, you can find me. Um, all the links are going to be in the description, so you don't have to search around for it. But contentelevision.co is the mothership, so make sure you head there to catch up with the previous content and pick up your con- Can't Stop, Won't Stop uh, limited edition morale patch. Cool. All right, team. Looking forward to uh, hitting, the, um, hitting the ground running with you guys and girls, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace.